Sorry, Victoria, can you see my screen? Yeah. Brilliant. So we're looking at learning outcome, fa um, outcome five, and that is know how to make an effective business presentation. So 5.1 is describe the different work occasions which require information to be presented to others. 5.2, explain the characteristics of an effective presentation. 5.3, explain the difference between an effective good visual aid and an ineffective poor visual aid. Then you've got your merit, produce a variety of visual aids which can be used during a presentation. And then 5D1, prepare and deliver interesting and appropriate presentations. So let's go over to the right one, go to the top, and slideshow. So when we're talking about presentations, we're just within any type of environment that you want, especially business environments, you're normally expected to make quite a, a high standard of a, a presentation. You'll do presentations in a lot of variety of different things, uh, meeting other people uh, for interviews, to pass in information, to get new clients. So there's a lot of places where presentations are needed. So whether or not you're there as an employee who's chairing a meeting or you're introducing new customers to a product, a strong presentation can give you a huge advantage you know, within that market. Now, when we're doing presentations, it's quite important to have a, a good skill in this. So it's something that you can develop as you're going on. You develop with your uh, confidence as well to present them. And there's certain ways that you can do this verbally, but also through your physical presentation skills in how you set out your slides, how you physically uh, do uh, the layout of certain things, or if you're making advertisements or anything. So. This is the whole part of what we're going to be looking at. Let's move this out the way. Yeah. So 5.1 is describe the different work occasions which require information to be presented to others. So again, there's lots of different circumstances that you're going to do a presentation in. Conferences, internal meetings, so within your own colleagues, interviews, training, networking, when you're trying to get new clients, you might have to do a, a verbal presentation when you're doing a phone call, so even that is a presentation, or when you're making sales pictures. So you've got conferences. So a business conference is quite a good opportunity to get your news across about different products. Now you might have seen when, uh, what's it called, Steve Jobs, the Apple guy, when he's putting out a new uh, Apple phone, he has this big conference yeah. that... Yeah, and he's there and he's telling you this is great, that is getting loads of videos and PowerPoints and, you know, different people doing, you know, musical things. So I, I taught normally zone out, but my husband loves watching them, so I've seen them in the background. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's all different language for me, but some people really enjoy them and it helps him sell, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I remember when there's like my husband said to me, "Oh, there's a new phone coming out after, and there's a presentation, and we're gonna, I'm going to go and there's a conference that they're gonna do, and he sets a timer up, and he's like, you know, make sure he's free <laughs> that day, and it isn't just, I think there's a lot of people that actually do that, that are so excited about certain things. Yeah, definitely, and especially for something like Apple and stuff. Yeah, like, love that. Oh, what have I just done? Pressing buttons randomly. There. So then we've got internal meetings. So sometimes when you're in a meeting with your um, uh, with your employees or if you're a manager there and you're running a meeting, in some situations you're going to need a presentation. So remember, presentations are always just PowerPoint. So they're not just like what I'm doing now, showing you a PowerPoint. It can be you having a flip chart with like images on it or charts or certain... Uh, bullet points that you talk about. So presentation can be anything that you're showing someone. So you can discuss your goals, you can write down what your targets are, you can write down what sort of uh, um, areas of development you're working towards. 
third is an interview. So interviews are depending on what type of job you're going for. Now, presentations have become quite popular within this now. First, it used to be that uh, for uh, if you're going for a big role, say like a CEO or like a high management position, you'd be expected, they'd give you a task and they'd say, right, I want you to create a presentation on this. So you'd go, you'd create like a, a short 10 to 12 slide presentation. You'd have uh, certain things to help you with it. And you'd go in and you'd make a presentation. They can see what your skills are. And then they also get an idea of how you work. Now, I remember my sister-in-law uh, went for a interview uh, as a teaching assistant in a school recently. And I helped her create a presentation on herself. All it was, was they asked, give me a presentation about who you are, what you do, give us a clue about what you like. So we talked about her family life, talked about what her interests are, what she likes to do for work, you know, and those type of things. So they're becoming quite popular now. Okay. I've never heard of it. Yeah. It's something as um you go more into the, as you get older and you go into more of the professional basis, uh, they're getting a lot more popular. Okay. Then you've got training. Sometimes you need a, a presentation for training. Now, I've done training sessions face-to-face -face for groups of adults. Um, I used to uh, do... Um, weekly sessions to help uh, when I was working in year one for the seven to eight year old kids. Uh, I was helping their parents as well to understand, you know, how to, uh, you know, when you're talking about phonics and sounds and letters and this particular sort of way that things are done. So I used to give them uh, a helping hand with that. So I'd create a um, presentation for every week uh, because I did a weekly uh, lessons with them. But then I'd also have homework that I created so that they could help their kids then I'd also have handouts and I make sure that I have flashcards that they can physically fill in and practice things. So presentations can be with your PowerPoints and all the resources and all the things that you physically actually give to them and show to them. Then you've got networking. So when you're in network, just imagine like on any of those, if you're not physically been to a networking event, I've never been to one, but I've seen them on like TV shows and in movies and uh, all it is is when there's all these people from different businesses that come together within the same area and they just get together, have a bit of drinks and food, but they're all talking to each other, you know, trying to get new business and all that type of stuff. Cultivating client relationships. So you might want to, uh, you know, go ahead and create new business with someone. So if you've got an, you're in one of the higher end business areas where you're trying to uh, get more business in with the other people, you might meet up with some clients. You might meet up with some people and say, right, we've got this, that, and the other. We can offer you this, and then this is how we'll support you. So you can use presentations and. It can be verbal or um, like PowerPoint, any of those, and that will uh, work as well. Then you've got telephone calls. Now, telephone is really important within business. It'll help you to sell, influence. You can engage with other people um, on the phone. So you might have had, I've had where I've had interviews, and they've been like uh, staged processes where um, originally I'll uh, get phoned first, They'll speak to me on the phone if they're happy with how they talk to me. Then they'll um, all invite me to a face-to-face -face interview. So it, it, telephone calls are very important in a lot of areas. You can create, get staff. You can um, get new business. You can sell your things. So, you know, you might even have those calls which we're constantly getting for telesales where they're trying to sell you something or they're trying to get you to fill out surveys or give you dodgy information and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And then the last one is making sales pictures. Now, for presentations, this might be the uh, most uh, classic one that you think of is where you're in a boardroom and you've got all these uh, colleagues and clients with you and you're standing at the front and you've got all these pie charts and graphs and images and you made a PowerPoint so these presentations will actually help you to uh, just get all the information you want to tell them in a fantastic way, nice and clear. It will help you to be confident. You can prepare in advance so you're able to actually, you know, pass on the information you want. 
Now with sales pitches, you're going to need to also have the ability to answer um, questions that you might not realize will come your way. So you need to know what your topic is, what you're talking about, and you need to have enough information so that if you're doing it, Victoria, and I ask you a question, you should be able to answer anything that you asked. Okay. So 5.1 is just different occasions where you're talking about why information has to be presented to others. We would look through a few of those. Do you have any questions for this section? No. Okay, ducks, let's go. So on to 5.2. So we're going to explain the characteristics of an effective presentation. Now, there are key areas to every presentation. You've got your content. So what are you physically talking about? So what are you putting on? What's your topic? What is going to go in your presentation? So again, are you doing it verbally? Are you doing it over the phone? Are you doing it as a PowerPoint? What's going in? Visual aid. So what sort of uh, images or charts or graphs? What have you got visually that will support your presentation? And then how are you delivering it? Are you doing it face-to-face? -face? Are you doing it over Zoom or Teams? Or are you going to speak to somebody over the phone and ask them to go on to the next slides? So we've got characteristics of presentations coming up now. Now, presentations can be looked at the formal event. So um, with these, you can use audio aids and visual aids. So audio uh, speaking, visual looking. Now, the main purpose of presentations is just to give information. You're there to persuade your audience or your clients, and you're there to create like a sense of uh, camaraderie with them, trying to get friendly with them, trying to get them to like you and you like them. And then you're trying to really just sell or persuade them to buy your service or buy your products. Now, a good presentation needs a subject. It should match what the objective is. So if you've decided that you're going to be selling a particular product, um, so an a Apple iPhone, you sh your um, the presentation should be about that, shouldn't it? Yeah. And it needs to fit your audience, and it should be organized. Now, when I say fit your audience, if you've got a group of young learners, say around about um, their, say, teenagers, you're going to talk to them as you would a teenager, wouldn't you? You're not going to give them really big, enormous words that they might not understand or keep it like 30, 40, 45 minutes where they'll get bored. But with an, like an adult audience or somebody that's in business, you might want to use more specific terms and like jargon that they'll understand or you might want to keep make it a bit more professional with like more complicated things in it. So you've got to really matter who you're talking to. Yeah. So the characteristics of a good or an effective presentation. So I've got a few points on here. So the presentation idea should be well adapted to your audience. They should relate to that audience and it should that message or that idea that you're putting across, it should be towards their interest. So if you go in and you start trying to present me something about football, I'd, I'd have lost in interest straight away because the most I know about football is what my boys go on and on about, Manchester United and Manchester City, and that's it. And they're always yeah. arguing who's the best, and that's it. But number two, so a good presentation should be concise. So when I say concise, it should be focused. It should be right to the point and don't go off track. Don't go off focus. It should have the potential to give the information that you want to give. So if you make a presentation and it's not even filling out the information that you wanted to give or you're still talking about it afterwards to explain, then it might not be the best presentation. You should be calm and relaxed when giving a presentation. So before you begin, wait, have eye contact with the audience. Just have a little bit of a chit chat. Ask them how you're doing. Don't just go upstairs, eyes down, walk right to the front and start, here you go, we're going to start. It's nice to just give them hello, hi, how are you, how are you doing, the weather's great, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's easy to say, but when it's death. It can get nerve-wracking, can't it? Especially when you're yeah. talking to people. I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, because it can be. When you get used to someone, it's easier, but if you're not used to them, you're like, oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to focus on what your message is, and then again, again, to be honest, all of these things they'll they'll develop. You know, you you understand how to use a positive body language. Like I'm, I'm not sure if I ever told you, but the first face to face adult lessons that I ever did. Working with children, I've worked with them for many years, so I'm extremely comfortable working with children. But the first adult lessons that I did when I was working with their parents on my own, nobody else to support me. It was meant to last an hour, the lesson, and I must have finished it in 20 minutes. I didn't look at them properly. I just gave them a couple of tasks, and I kept them talking. And I didn't even understand how, you know, like on here, sometimes I'll read a little bit of the slides, sometimes I'll talk a little bit separately. With that, all I did was just speak completely separately, barely gave them the information, and I was like, there you go. I'm surprised it turned up with me after, but it was terrible. But as I got used to it, you do, it can be so bad sometimes and then build up. So never put yourself down thinking this was bad. You can always improve. Yeah, definitely. And just growing up as well, I feel like I will get more comfortable. Definitely you will, and you'll be put into different situations where you'll be like, oh, this is normal for me now. You know, right now yeah. things are so like, oh, you know, what's this? I've not heard of this before. But you will, as you go into different environments, especially when you go into university, you'll get used to a lot more of these things. Yeah. So you need to make sure you give the information you want to. The person who's speaking should use visual aids, diagrams, pictures, charts, so every single slide, it should have limited information and only essential information. Sometimes it's quite hard to do that because when you've got so many things you want to put down, but you've got to try and really focus on breaking things down. Because you've seen it previous um, lessons that we did, the PowerPoints were full of information with just word and word and word. And these yeah. are quite full as well. But I've tried to break it down to as small as possible. So sometimes it can be done and sometimes it can't. But you've got to really um, think what the best practice is. Yeah. Now, if you're doing a presentation, you should rehearse it. Plan it, rehearse it and practice it. So even if you're never going to seem silly standing in a room going over the slides. Every time I've done these before the lessons, I will go onto these slides and I will make sure because sometimes I'll miss things. Like you've seen, sometimes I've got the odd spelling mistake in it, which it doesn't get caught up because it turns into a different word or I've got like things that I've got missing numbers. So I do go over it, but sometimes you still miss things. Yeah, happens. I missed the whole question. <laughs> yeah. So the person who's speaking who's doing the presentation should say, you know, ask questions. You know, I've got, I'm I'm very lucky with you, Victoria, because you're very vocal with me. You uh, converse with me quite a lot. With uh, some of my other lessons where I've got uh, different uh, sets of students, some of them are happy talking. A lot of them are lessons I've got where I have to physically type in questions into my slides to get them to focus on it. Because if I ask them verbally, I don't get any answers. But if they're typed up and they see that, right, this is what I've got to do, then I'll get a bit. So. Make sure you try and question your audience. Yeah. And the last little sections in here, summarise the presentation, just give them a final little section. So we've gone over this, that and the other, and it'll give them a bit of a reminder, especially some people know now. The speaker, the person who's doing the presentation, should be presentable. So if you're wearing a, a skirt with tights, make sure there's no ladders in it or rips or anything like that. Make sure your shirt is nice and tucked in, or if you've got a suit on, if you're in, depending on who you're talking to, what your audience is, make sure you're presentable, your hair is nice in place. And I know it's one of those things that you think, why do I need to do that when everybody should just be focused on what I'm talking about? But it, it can be very distracting about your own personal appearance. So if my, my hair just goes everywhere, so I've got to really focus on making sure that my hair is nice and neat whenever I am doing anything. So, um, because it can be distracting. I think my daughter. Yeah. The thing is, like, that you actually put in effort as well for the people. And, it's, you know, it's nice for people to see that you actually care about this meeting. Yeah, that's true. It's showing that they care, they've come up and they've made sure that they look good. Now, 
the way you stand as well, you should sort of stand with your feet slightly far apart. You've got good balance, so you're not falling over. And then use confident gestures. Use short, simple words. If there's something within it, now what I do on a normal basis, regardless of whether what my students' age is or what their understanding is, I will still, if I use different words that I feel that somebody might get confused at, I'll just say this, I'll say the word, and then I'll just say what it means as well. Because some people might not need it, some people might, but it's there. And then the speaker should just state what their objectives were at the beginning of a presentation and then start the presentation. So are you okay with 5.2? Yeah. So let's go on to 5.3. So explain the difference between an effective, so a good visual aid, and an ineffective, a poor visual aid. So when we're talking about visual aids, we're just talking about those um, things that support the writing, like a picture, a video, a handout, um, a, uh, a chart, graph, table, any of those things. So a good visual aid should be large enough so that it's clearly visible to the entire group. So if you're doing a presentation and you've decided to talk about a, a chart which goes over statistics, then you want to make sure that the people at the front of the room and the people at the back of the room can actually see it. Don't put any extra decoration on. Sometimes simple is best. If you're putting on like fancy borders and things, it's distracting because you're going to be focusing on all those little twirlies and the flowers and things, whatever you put on. Now, you'll notice what I do here. This is something that I am, it is part of a good presentation as well. Anything important should be uh, highlighted in a different colour. So you'll see over here, I've done good visual aids. And as well as I've done that in blue, then I make my titles in dark blue. So I try to make the all of my titles, the ones that I think are important, I make dark. Anything else, I'll make bright blue. So I, I try to use two particular colours in my slides all the time. So your presentation should show good workmanship and careful development. So when I'm making PowerPoints, and I have been, uh, I do quite a lot of uh, presentations that I make for a lot of my courses. Now, within those, physically putting the writing down doesn't take me long. I can do uh, one lesson plan in an hour and an hour and a half, get it done now. What actually takes me time is making it good, setting it all up, making sure all the font is the same, the sizes are the same, that you've not got a different color here, or like a, a light black here or a dark black here, or this is an aerial and that's not Times New Roman. You know, so or putting an image in that takes a lot of time. Um, and when I was doing my assessment assignment, hmm. um, I kept making sure every time I write something or, or do that my headline is okay, that the front is fine. Yeah. And then I, I don't I don't know what happened, but the whole thing changed the front. So everything I done changed. So I had to go all over uh -huh. and change the front and everything again. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> It's a pain, isn't it? Because that really does take a lot of time to do. Oh no, definitely. So when you're doing an image which is uh, made smaller or bigger, make sure that it's to scale. So sometimes there's pictures that I use that um, I want to fit a certain space, so I'll pull at them and I'll stretch them a little bit. If I stretch them too far, they go weird. Like if I'm showing you a picture of people and they're like stretched faces, so I've still got to make sure that they're scaled. So don't overly reduce them or overly stretch them. Make sure they're displayed properly so they're not half of the screen here. Don't put too much writing on because it'll, it'll just be confusing again. And if you're doing a physical image where you're mounting it, where you're taking it somewhere, then uh, make sure it's put nicely on um, mounted properly. It's got a good border and that you can walk around with it. So what makes a poor visual aid, it's just the opposite of what we've talked about. Uh, if you're just talking about, say, for example, Samsung, and you start putting Apple phones into it, or you start putting uh, pictures of children on holiday, or families on holiday, it's got no relation to it. So make sure what you do, do any images or handouts that they've got a relation to what you're talking about. Bad formatting, so make sure it's not blurred or out of scale. 
sometimes you can use things which are hard to understand or they don't suit your audience. So you might make it too simple or you might make it too complicated. So within that, now if I was to go and show this slide to a group of uh, children in year six, they'd be like, what? It's too much writing for them. It's too boring for them. There's not enough images or fancy things that they appeal to on here. Don't put too much text on. Make sure it, it, so a bad visual aid will not be displayed properly. It'll be covering text. It'll be off center. I mean, it's happened to me before. I've made PowerPoints and I've got them put onto uh, the uh, website. And then I've gone into them to teach them again a couple of weeks later. And I'll see that one of my images are going on top of the text. And it annoys me so much because I've got to go back and fix it. But um, it's because I didn't format it properly in the first place. Make sure it's um, not highly decorated. And make sure it fades to the background so it's not too not so it's unnoticeable. Some pictures you'll want people to notice, some of them you just want to support. So you've got an effect got a, an example of an effective and an ineffective visual aid. So on this here, this is just a just a basic one here. So just reasons for selling online. And it's nice, it gives you all the information you want. But again, it's just a lot of right uh, writing you're reading too much but again this is so much better so it's the same information but it's been put a little bit nicer so you're not having to read so much on here you still know you've got the same basic information but it's been put nicer doesn't it yeah so. i use a lot of them i try so let's go on to 5M1. This is quite a simple one, to be honest. Now, your meta question here and your distinction question here, when we go over the assignment, they'll actually get covered because you're going to do a presentation or you're going to make a couple of things which will work as a presentation. And these parts will get covered on there. But I'll speak to you about those on Wednesday, how that's going to work. But on this, it's just produce a variety of visual aids which can be used during a presentation. So all you've got to do is look at some visual aids that you can use in a presentation. So it could be a handout, a leaflet, a video, a PowerPoint. So your PowerPoint presentation will cover this. So again, we just got a bit on here because you're going to talk about in one of the tasks, characteristics of effective communication. So there's images again that you can add in. And so this is just a, um, a graph. Cool. Yeah. This is some handouts, like leaflets that will get handed out. Okay. Yeah. You know, these are some type of documents that we, uh, leaflets, um, advertising and so on on here. So, yeah, just a couple of ideas of what a visual aid is. But, again, I'll, I'll go over this properly with you on uh, Wednesday, exactly what you need to do. And, again, the same. with. So, this is just an idea of what presentation layout could be like, a PowerPoint presentation. So again, 5D1, same thing again. So you're going to prepare a PowerPoint presentation or a poster or a handout. Any of these things will cover it. And again, we'll talk on Wednesday properly. So you're just going to be covering in your assignment. They ask you to prepare a presentation or a poster or a handout on this topic, understanding key principles and methods of verbal communication in business. And I just went online and I copied and pasted that in. And this is one of the first images I got. So um, it just gives you the principles of good communication. So it's not hard to find information there. But it's just about how you're going to present it. But yeah, your um, task four in the assignment brief will cover 5M1, 5D1, and some of uh, 1D2 in task four in uh, learning outcome one. Okay. So do you, have, do you have any questions on any of these areas? Um, I have a question about something else. Mm -hmm. So, oh, sorry, of course. No, it's okay. I pressed something. Um, so I went on email to see our les lesson. Yeah. And the last one is from July the fifth. Oh, uh, our own. Oh, uh, which lessons? Which topic were you on? No, I mean, like, um, wait, I'm on the right thing. 
you know when you send me like the whole thing like Tuesday June twenty second one p.m. Yeah. and join me. So mm-hmm. the last one is on July the fifth. Oh wait, is that the right thing? Oh no, that's the last one. Yeah, it must be the last one. Yeah, the last one on this is um the, yeah, no, uh, the wrong one. Uh, Wednesday. Do you want me to give you the codes on those? I think you did. I just looked at the yeah. last one, you know, last assignment one, I think. Yeah, 